What's up everyone, welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today is video 9 in my From 0 to 2K series. I'm going to go over how to write blog posts that rank high in search engines like Google, and I'm actually going to write a blog post in this video. So it's one of the main questions I've gotten is how to create content that actually ranks, that actually gets traffic consistently from organic search engines. So if you do want to see all the videos in this series, you can find them on my YouTube playlist from zero to 2K, free digital marketing training. I've gone over how to set up your website analytics, branding, uh, some basics of marketing, uh, keyword research, keyword mapping, content strategy, Pinterest. I went over how to rank higher for your SEO keywords. Now, this is a different lesson than what I'm going to teach today. The key to marketing growth, which is the CCC, is consistent content creation. So today what I want to do is go over how to write blog posts that actually rank high. So in the previous videos, we went over how to pull our keyword list. So here's our keyword list right now. So you can see we have our keyword list and we're starting to map some of these different pages to our individual keywords. So I said at the end of the first month, I wanted to have these 55 keywords covered. So, so far I'm pacing pretty well with my content. So I'm not too worried about having all of this new content added to my website, but one of the ones that I put off was wicker baskets. So if we come up to the top here, you're going to see with my URL mapping over to the right hand side, wicker baskets, I have not created a page for yet. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to show you today when you have a keyword, what to do to create a piece of content that actually ranks for that keyword. Now, obviously by the end of this video, my content's not going to be ranking, but I will show you over time that I'm going to be ranking for keywords related to wicker baskets. In addition to this short tail keyword, which has over 30,000 monthly searches. So, Coming over here, step one, start with an outline with some of the most relevant long tail keywords and common questions. Now you could do your writing directly in WordPress. So if we come over to my WordPress website here, if you are using WordPress, just go to your posts section, click on add new post, and that's going to bring you into the area where you can publish new blog posts on your blog. I already have best wicker baskets here, so I'm just going to click on edit and we're going to open up this draft that I've created. And usually what I start with is I go through some of the questions that people are most likely to ask based around this keyword. Now, the easiest way to do that is just come over here in Google and just type in your keyword. So this will have a few different purposes typing in your keyword here. But as we scroll down, not only can we see what ranks, but for most search terms, you're going to get this people also ask. What is a wicker basket called? Where can I find baskets? How do you protect a wicker basket? So usually what I'll do is I'll click on a few of these because it's going to expand this list. So we'll keep on clicking this and we'll keep expanding the list. And then what you can do is just copy the entire list that you have here and we'll come up to the top. We'll click on copy, come right into WordPress and we'll paste it. So now we have some different questions and we can go through them one by one. This is usually what I'll do when I'm creating a new piece of content because it's going to help me really expand on what I am creating. And I can see a lot of the different pain points that people have. In addition, it's going to give me different ideas for new content. So usually I'll just look for questions that I think I can expand upon. So what is a wicker basket called? I mean, the answer for that is a wicker basket. So we're just going to get rid of that one. Where do I find baskets? Get rid of that one. How do you protect a wicker basket? So that's a really good question that I can not only create a new piece of content for, I can also write a couple sentences in this comprehensive guide for wicker baskets on this article as well. What are wicker baskets used for? So I have that up here, what to do with wicker baskets. So I've already typed out a few different questions that I know I want to answer. What is a wicker basket, different types of wicker baskets, what to do with wicker baskets and different sizes. Now I can also do something like wicker basket colors because there's different colors that they come in. And then now we can just add some of these different questions to the list. So that's usually where I get started. If we come back over here with number one, start with some common questions and now pulling some long tail keywords. There's a lot of different ways to pull long tail keywords. My favorite way, and if you followed me long enough, you know that I love using the Google Keyword Planner, basically because I'm in Google Ads a lot. So with the Keyword Planner, uh, if you go into your Google Ads account, go to your tools and settings here, go to planning and click on Keyword Planner. You can also just go directly to Google and search Google Keyword Planner. It will be the top result. And if you click on it, it will either bring you right into the Keyword Planner or tell you to sign in or create a Google account to access it. It's completely free to use. There are some limitations if you're not running an active Google Ads campaign. So if you don't have an active Google Ads campaign, you come in here, click on Discover New Keywords, and all we're going to do is enter Wicker Baskets. And we're going to click on Get Results. 
Okay, so you can see here I can broaden my search. So it's already giving me some different ideas over here. I can refine the keywords over here to the right hand side. But if we scroll down, you can see average monthly searches here. If you're not running an active campaign, you might only see ranges of data for average monthly searches. It's really not the end of the world. You're still getting plenty of data. And ultimately what you're looking for are the most popular keywords. So when I'm doing this, what I'll do is I'll enter my keyword here. We're just gonna get rid of this refined keywords over here for now. I do use this sometimes, but in this case, I'm not going to. We're gonna add a filter where my keyword text must contain wicker baskets. So if we scroll down here a little bit, you're gonna see things like willow basket here, rattan laundry basket. So those types of things I don't wanna show up. I just want search terms that include, so for example, wicker storage, I don't want that to show up. So things like round wicker baskets, wicker hamper basket, those types of keywords I wanna show up here. So we have text match, text match for wicker baskets. We're gonna click on apply. And then usually what I'll do is I'll click on average monthly searches to see what's the most popular. Now you can see here, it's still giving me 365 keywords. So we'll add one more filter and we'll say average monthly searches greater than or equal to 500. And we'll click on apply. Okay, so now it's saying we have 23 different keywords. So usually what I'll do is I'll either download these keyword ideas or just copy and paste them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste these keywords and we're gonna put them directly here on my WordPress blog. Now I'm gonna start writing over here in Microsoft Word because not everybody is using WordPress. I'm gonna actually write the blog post in Word. But for right now, I just wanted to show you some of these different keywords here in WordPress as you're creating a blog post. So we'll scroll down to the bottom and we'll click enter a few times. Now, if we come back over here to the keyword planner, we can download our keyword ideas as a CSV file and then we'll open our file. Okay, I'm getting an issue preparing my report, so we're just gonna copy and paste this. So we'll just take all of this, copy it and paste. Okay, so we have all of our keywords here. So I've copied and pasted all of these top long tail keywords and I'll show you why this is important in a second, but there's different ways you can pull different long tail keywords for your business. For me, I like to use the keyword planner. You can also use, this is suvel.com, S-O-O-V-L-E.com. If you come in here and you just type in your keyword, so I typed in wicker furniture, but we'll do wicker baskets. You can see it's gonna give me the top results from Google, gives me the top results from Amazon, top results from Yahoo, top results from Bing, top results from YouTube, and top results from Answers. You can also see it's gonna give me from Wikipedia result, but you can take a lot of these as well. So wicker baskets cheap, with lids, with handles, four shelves, for storage, four plants. So it's gonna give you a lot of the most popular keywords that people are looking up if you just use suvel.com. Now the other option you can do is use keywordseverywhere.com. You install this for Google Chrome, and it's gonna be completely free. So you might see these when I search Google a lot over on the right hand side, people also search for. So this with the free version will not give you the search volume data, but you can see wicker baskets with handles. You're gonna see a lot of these same ones that you see with suvel.com. But as we scroll down, you're gonna see people also search for. So you have round wicker baskets, oval wicker baskets, baskets for plants, wall decor with handles. So you get a lot of different options here as you're trying to expand your piece of content. So this is really where I start when I'm starting to put together an outline. So what I'll do is I'll come over here and I'll go through each of these keywords and each of these questions and we're gonna pare it down a little bit. So let's start with keywords here and we're gonna copy and paste these into Microsoft Word. So we'll copy and paste these here. So we have our keywords here and usually what I'll do is I'll just get rid of a few here, like some brand names. So target wicker baskets, I'm gonna get rid of. Uh, if we keep coming down, we have wicker baskets, Michael. So we'll get rid of that as well. So we have gray wicker baskets. Now these types of keywords, if you're seeing something like wicker baskets for cube storage, wicker cube baskets, I just consider that the same keyword. So I could do wicker cube storage baskets and that would basically make sure all of those keywords are included rather than writing two different blurbs for essentially the same keyword. Extra large wicker baskets, wicker storage baskets for shelves. So all in all, this is a good starting point with some of the different long tail keywords we wanna target. Now we'll come back over here and go through the questions real quick. So we'll just get rid of this, come up and copy some of these questions. Now I've already pulled some of the top questions. And one thing you might wanna do is when you are writing an article, just start with some of the common questions you think people are gonna have. So for me, I did what is a wicker basket, types of wicker baskets, not exactly a question, but something I know people are gonna be looking for. What to do with wicker baskets, sizes of wicker baskets, and wicker basket colors. So going through some of these other questions, 
Can wicker baskets get wet? I can answer some of these different questions as well. It's also something you can put off a little bit. So when you are writing a piece of content, you can say, okay, here are some questions I wanna answer, but in my initial thing that I'm gonna be publishing, my initial blog post, I'm not gonna answer any of these questions yet. I'll answer them in the second iteration. So keep that in mind. You can always keep your blog posts up to date and you can always improve them over time. So that's what I'm gonna do with a lot of these questions here. And I'm gonna focus on my main questions at the top. Okay, now we're almost ready to start writing, but before we do, one of the things I like to do is look at what's currently ranking for the keyword that I'm targeting. So we're gonna come back over here to Google and we typed in wicker baskets. So I've looked at what's currently ranking right now with wicker baskets. We'll go to the first page and you can see at the top a lot of advertisements here. So people really have to scroll to get to the first result. And then when we get down here, you can see amazon.com, athome.com, walmart.com. We have the local pack here keep coming down. So some popular products for sale. So I'm not going to have any of my own products for sale. So I can't take advantage of this Refine by shape. I will have separate blog articles for all of these different shapes and types. So that's one way to make sure that I'm targeting these different keywords, bed, bath and beyond wayfair world market. So it's going to be really hard to get to the top of Google for this individual keyword because of these different brands that I'm competing against. So what I like to do is seeing what ranks first, so what's ranking here are product pages. So they're all e-commerce websites. If we open up Wayfair, you're just gonna see a huge listing of different wicker baskets for sale. So it, this is essentially what's gonna be the most likely to rank for this keyword. Now I do have a product page already. So if we come over here, I have wickerguide.com, product category, wicker baskets. When people come to this page, I do need to do my widgets, my sidebar here. But when they come to this page, they have all these subcategories, planner baskets, picnic baskets, baskets with lids, laundry baskets. And I'm gonna have a lot more here as well for basically every long tail keyword variation we looked at earlier. So I'm gonna have all these different subcategories here. So essentially my strategy to rank for this individual page is to have this e-commerce page where people can come here, shop products, and potentially buy one of these products and also a blog post type page with thousands of words with a lot of different ideas for what people can do with wicker baskets, what type of wicker baskets they can purchase. So both strategies can work for different keywords. Now there is the issue of keyword cannibalization. You don't want to have two different pages targeting the same keyword. So what I can do over time is actually set which page that I want Google to rank. So I can set a canonical URL and I can either take this one right here, wickerguide.com slash wicker baskets, or what I can do is this product category page. And I'm essentially gonna tell Google, I'd rather you rank this page than the other page. So that's something I can do over time. Usually when I'm creating my first pieces of content, I just create the content and see what starts to rank better. And then I'll kind of set different pages depending on what's going to rank better. Because sometimes for different keywords, for example, something like wicker baskets with lids, if I do a blog article all about different wicker baskets with lids, types of lids, what they can be used for, a lot of times that can rank better than just one of these individual product pages where people come and basically shop an e-commerce website. So it's always important to see what ranks. And usually what I'll do is I'll try to find the first page that ranks in an e-commerce scenario like this, try to find the first page that ranks that's basically more written content. So I can have an idea of what is ranking there. Now you can also use something like buzzsumo.com, enter a keyword or a domain here, and you can find some of the content that's performing the best in terms of social media sharing and total engagement. So we're gonna enter Wicker Baskets here and click on enter. Okay, so this is the free version of Buzzsumo. So you don't get too much here, but it can be useful. So we see what's, getting the most engagement, wicker laundry basket, plus reviews, crate and barrel, useful home decor and storage wicker baskets. Now, some of these you might find have just a ton of engagement with one social media network. This isn't a ton of total engagement for a keyword. So if you see something like this, it generally just means that it's not a piece of content that people are constantly sharing or anything like that. Just because if it's something like what is SEO or SEO strategies, you're gonna have a lot more people looking up that information and a lot more people sharing those types of articles. So this, I can't really take away too much from these top three results. If we keep scrolling down, you can see 262 wicker baskets come together in a stunning arch pavilion. Not something I can really recreate, but eight ideas of jute wicker baskets, DIY baskets. So I could do something like a DIY basket, but you're also gonna find some things like this where it's really just more celebrity type news. 
But my takeaway looking at this is people look up how to clean wicker baskets. People want to know how to hang wicker baskets on their wall. People want to know how to create some DIY baskets. And then we have just some wicker picnic basket here, wicker laundry basket. So we'll cover those different keywords. But this could be helpful if you're just looking for some of the things that are ranking or engaged with for some of these different keywords. Now, if we come back over here to Google, we're going to go to page two. because we're going to be looking for more of a blog post type article. And I found one when I was preparing for the video, but you can see all of these are just e-commerce pages. But here we go. Storables.com 50 best wicker storage baskets 2020 edition. So if we click here and we scroll down, we can see they have a ton of different storage baskets people can buy with some text for each images here. So this is going to be a hard page to outrank. But what I like to do a lot of times is just take a page like this. So we'll copy this page and then you can take wordcounter.net and it's gonna you can open up wordcounter.net slash website word counter. And what you do is you enter a URL here and we can click on count words. So for this individual page, there's about 4,000 words on the website. That's a huge, huge piece of content. And that's probably why it does rank so well, even among all those really tough competitors. So this gives you an idea of basically what you would have to do to make sure that you're ranking even close to this business because they have a really good article, 50 best wicker storage baskets, 2020. So I could do an article like that. And that's something I can try to incorporate within my wicker baskets blog post over time. Again, what I want to do now is just focus on these questions and my long tail keywords. That's really where I start when I'm starting to blog. So starting with an outline with relevant long tail keywords and common questions. Number two, what is currently ranking high on Google for the keywords you are targeting? So enter those keywords directly into Google, see what's ranking, and it's going to vary uh, depending on what you search directly into Google. So if we click on back here, let's just say I'm looking up some information about marketing. Let's say I want to know some small business marketing ideas. Okay. So we open this, you see the product pack has gone up here, but if we come down, you're going to see WordStream, three, 23 low budget marketing ideas, 17 free marketing ideas, 64 creative marketing ideas. So you can see here, if you're creating a blog post about small business marketing ideas, you need to create a list of different ideas for people to follow and people to implement for their own business. So understanding what ranks is a really important part before you start deciding what type of blog post you're going to write. So there's a lot of different types of blog posts you can write. There's basically an endless number, but some of the most common types, tutorials and how to. So basically how to create a Google ads campaign. So that's a common type of blog post that I would have on Surfside PPC. Visual, so videos, infographics, charts, and you can incorporate different types of these pieces of content and blog posts together in just one single blog post. So lists, product reviews, what is blank, overviews and guides. These are some of the most common types of blog posts, but I pulled up a really good blog by optinmonster.com. 73 awesome types of blog posts you can write today. Some of the top ones you're gonna see are gonna kind of follow what I just told you, but if we just come down to 10, interviews, advice from the experts, reviews, comparisons, video blogs, they have MP3s, resources, problem and solutions. So there's a ton of different types of blogs you can write depending on what keywords you're targeting and basically what problem you're trying to solve. You need to understand user intent. When someone goes to Google and they search for wicker baskets, they're looking for wicker baskets for sale. When someone goes to Google, they're looking for small business marketing ideas. They want a list of different types of ideas they can implement. So you need to keep that in mind as you're writing your blog post. And then as you're writing some of the different common elements. So the left hand side is things you really want to have in every type of blog post title, short introduction. What will the article teach the reader? Some key information and insight. So you really want to start with impactful information that are, is going to hook readers as they read through your blogs. Visual information, so videos, infographics, and images are always going to be great teaching tools in addition to your written words. Bullet points, so bullet points are really popular on blogs, and there's actually evidence that Google ranks blog posts higher if they do use more lists and more bullet points and some different checklists and things like that because it's just easier to read. So a lot of people don't like to read large blurbs of text without it being broken up by some long tail keywords, some questions. So different things like that as you're writing, keep that in mind. You want to break up your blog posts and we'll go through that in a little bit as we start writing. 
internal resources and external resources. So you can link to pages on your website that are going to expand the reader's knowledge and link to other pages on the internet that are going to expand the reader's knowledge. Don't be afraid to link out to competitors if they do have some really good blog posts. But keep in mind where you're linking to, you can always create a better blog than they do if you have a want to create that resource on your own website. Summary and prompt reader. So essentially what you want to do is wrap up your blog post and then maybe ask a question to the reader to see if they want to leave a comment answering that question, basically to keep the conversation going. That's just an idea to get more blog comments and to get people to engage a little bit more with your business. Now, some other things you can do, table of contents, a call to action. So if you're trying to get people to take a specific action, insert definitions, use quotes, insert products, use social media sharing options where people can either share a quote, people can share a Pinterest pin, or you can actually set it up so when people do highlight a certain portion of text, you can say, do you want to tweet this out or share it to Facebook? On-page SEO, so it's really important to use the best on-page SEO strategies if you want your blog post to rank. You want to make sure you have a meta description for all of your blog posts. It tells Google what your blog post is about. And then last but not least, a lot of blogs have featured images as well at the very top. Okay, so let's just look at a couple different outlines that I pulled. So one is from coschedule.com, one is from ahrefs.com. And what I like about ahrefs, they show the list post. So you have a title, you have an introduction, you have some list items, and then you have a conclusion. So a really simple way to create a long form blog post is to just start with your title. You basically want to have some content in between there, and then you want to go through each individual bullet point or each individual list item. Now you can see here, here's a much more simple way to look at this, a title, an intro, and then main point one, one reason why this is interesting, one reason why this is interesting, one reason why this is interesting, and keep doing this over and over again, and then add some additional research and recommended reading and get to your conclusion. So a really simple blog post outline, the Ahrefs one is a little more complicated, and I'll put links for both of these images where you can find them in the video description if you're interested in learning more. So number four, time to write. So let's start writing our blog posts and we're gonna open up Microsoft Word here and I'm gonna show you basically what I do. So we know we're writing about wicker baskets so we'll just put that at the top here and we'll increase that in size a little bit and now we're just gonna start with our introduction. So your introduction is basically two to three sentences. So you're looking at two to three sentences with a problem and a solution. Okay, so that's really what you're looking for and how you're gonna solve that problem for people is, is a really basic way to look at it. So I'm gonna write my sentences here and I'm gonna kind of fast forward through my writing portion because otherwise we're gonna be here for hours if I don't. So I'm gonna put the blurb here and then I'll talk about it. Okay, so we have our short little introduction here. We have, it can be difficult to find functional storage space in your home. In addition, storing your laundry, bathroom garbage and house garbage can be a headache as well. So we'll get rid of it as well here. So you can always proofread while you're writing. Luckily, wicker baskets can solve all of those issues. There are thousands of wicker baskets you can choose from to give you additional storage space and assist you with transporting laundry. So a couple simple issues that people deal with with wicker baskets. Now people usually use them for storage, but what I have here is you can browse our subcategories to below, below to find exactly what you need. Now this is gonna be bolded when I publish it. We're gonna browse wicker basket types and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a table of contents. Now you can see this line right here. Every time where I stop writing, I'm gonna put that line, but we're gonna do browse wicker basket types. And then below what I'm gonna do is take these different subcategories. So we're gonna take them all, we'll copy them and we'll paste them. So right down to gray wicker baskets and we'll paste them here. Okay, so we have our intro here and now we have browse wicker basket types and we have all of these different types of wicker baskets. Now I've already pulled out which ones I'm gonna write about today. So I'm gonna take that list right now and it's all based on search volume. So I've gone through my keyword list here and as we scroll down, you're gonna see different types of baskets have more search volume than others. So large wicker baskets, if we keep coming down, we have wicker basket with lid up here. We have wicker storage baskets, wicker laundry baskets. So the main keywords that I've pulled out, I have listed in Microsoft Word Okay, so here's where we're at right now, browse wicker basket types. We have all these different types of wicker baskets. And what I'm gonna end up doing is making these clickable links so people can jump around my article. So I went over a table of contents. That's essentially gonna be the table of contents for this article. 
So we're gonna browse wicker basket types and then I'm gonna have a sentence or two for each one of these types of baskets. And then I'm gonna also have relevant products listed for sale. So when someone clicks on wicker laundry baskets, they can read what they're useful for, how they're used, why you need them. And then I'm gonna have about 30 different products listed for sale of specifically wicker laundry baskets. And I'm also gonna link out to the page on my website where I have wicker laundry baskets for sale. So the way you create a comprehensive article is by writing about all of these different subcategories and long tail keywords of what you're writing about, and then also linking off to page that have additional information. So I'll go through that as we continue this blog post, but all I'm gonna do right now is take this list again, we're gonna copy it, and we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna do wicker baskets, and I'm gonna have start with some of my favorite wicker baskets. So we'll do 30 favorite wicker baskets. I'll list those for sale. And then what we're gonna do is write a couple sentences about all of these. So right here, what we're gonna do is products, okay? And then we're gonna get into all these different types of baskets. When someone clicks on this link, it's gonna bring them down here. So this will make more sense after we publish the blog post, but we have wicker storage baskets, laundry baskets, large wicker baskets. So essentially coming back over to our presentation and coming back here, this is what we're doing. So we have blog post title, introduction, and then each of our main points is essentially gonna be a different variation of a wicker basket. I'm gonna have a sentence or two about each type, and then I'm gonna have products for sale. So when people come to my page, they can easily find what they're looking for by clicking on the link. So they come to my page, they say, okay, I'm looking for small wicker baskets. I click here. It's gonna show them a bunch of products for sale. If they want more, they can click on the URL that brings them to my page with small wicker baskets. So we'll keep scrolling down here. And now what we're gonna do is write a couple sentences for each of these. So it's gonna be a couple sentences for each, and then we're gonna have products. So the same thing we had up here, products, we're gonna do that for all of these as well. So let's do this for all of them. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do for all these different subcategories is write a couple different sentences here. So I'll do this one live, wicker storage baskets, to kind of give you an idea of what I do. And then I'll do all the other ones. I'll just copy and paste them in here. And then we're gonna start writing more in WordPress after we kind of finish out this little portion of the article. Okay, so usually what I'll do for something like this is I'll say every wicker basket can be used for storage along with other functions. However, not every wicker, okay, so a couple sentences to start. Every wicker basket can be used as, can be used for storage along with other functions. However, not every wicker storage basket will be as useful based on size and durability. Okay, we'll say usually storage baskets are square, comma, but they can be round as well. You should look for larger basket sizes if you need more storage. And then just a couple little tips will say, consider storage baskets with lids. Okay, so we have consider storage baskets with lids for a cleaner look in your home. Lastly, wicker baskets with handles can be useful if you need to move your storage basket. So that's basically what I talk about when it's a couple interesting points about whatever you're writing about. You essentially just wanna give a little bit of information, what it is, how it's used, why it's useful, and some different ways you can use it. And you basically wanna apply that to whatever you're writing about. So whatever this keyword is here, make sure you give people some impactful sentences that can be useful as they read through your blog article. Now for me, my blog articles are very visual and I'll show you that after I publish it because I'm gonna have some products in there. But essentially, I just wanna make sure that I'm giving some information and make sure I'm targeting other long tail keywords. So wicker storage baskets with handles would be considered a long tail keyword of wicker storage baskets where wicker storage baskets is a long tail keyword of wicker baskets. So the more I can expand on the information that I'm giving people, the better my content will rank over time. So now what I'm gonna do for each of these subcategories, I'm gonna write a couple sentences about all these different options here. So large wicker picnic baskets, small wicker baskets. So just give people a little bit more information about how to use picnic baskets, different colors, different types, based on the type of picnic people are having, based on how many people there are. And that's all I kind of look for. Now, as you're expanding content, you can also just use Google as your friend. I 
I like going into Google and typing in something. For example, I could do wicker laundry basket. And what you might end up finding are a few questions that you can answer. You might see some different keywords from the images portion. So that's another thing that I like to do is look, go to Google, type in your keyword, go to images, and it's going to give you a bunch of different long tail variations. So people who are looking for wicker laundry baskets look for different colors, different shapes. So that's all I really need to write about. You can find laundry baskets in gray, white, dark brown, black, any color you really want to. And you can find laundry baskets in different sizes and shapes, rectangle, oval, tall, square, large, yada, yada. So make sure I'm typing out all of these different options that people have. So as they look for them, they're going to be more likely to find my article. So that's what we're going to do now is put a couple of different points for all of these different subcategories and we'll fast forward a bit. Okay, so you've added all of our content here. So you can see we have wicker baskets for plants and we have three or four sentences here for that. Make sure you put a period at the end of it. Wicker baskets with handles. So we have a few sentences here for that. So basically what try to do is just write a little bit more about each subcategory. And it's the same thing if you're doing a list type post. So if you're doing a post where you're typing out all these different small business marketing ideas, just say, okay, this small business marketing idea is to create content. Here's why you want to create content. So just go with the point, go with the why and continue forward. And that's essentially all you want to do as you continue writing. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this content now and I'm gonna move it over to WordPress. So we're ready to start writing in WordPress. A lot of times I start in Microsoft Word just because it helps me organize my ideas a little bit and organize my content. So we'll come over here and we'll open up our blog post. Just get rid of everything we have because I have it all in that Microsoft Word document for right now. And we'll click on paste. Now, one thing I haven't done yet is answer some of my top questions. So we're gonna come back over here, we're gonna scroll down, and we're gonna take some of these questions and put them into our WordPress document as well. So we have what is a wicker basket type, sizes, wicker basket colors. Okay, so come over to our post. Okay, so what is a wicker basket? We have types of wicker baskets here. So I'm just gonna essentially list all these different types again, what to do with wicker baskets. So obviously I've gone over that a little bit with each of these individual categories, but we'll expand on it a little bit more here. Sizes and colors. So I wanna have all these subcategories as well. And what we're gonna do is say how to choose the right wicker basket. We'll use headers here, so make sure you're using headers because you wanna use header one, header two, header three, that's what H2 means, to essentially make sure your article flows and is organized. So when I come up to the top here, usually what I'll do is we have browse wicker basket types, so I'll make this into a header four. We're gonna make these list items, so we have unordered list, UL. Now, I'm doing a little bit of HTML here. It's not anything overly complicated. If you don't understand it, you can also use the visual portions to write. I prefer to just write in the text portion, much easier for me, but you can do use the visual option as well. You can also use some of these short codes if you're using WordPress. So I can just scroll over here and make it a list item. So you can see list item. Now again, I'll just do this all manually. So we'll put make these all list items right now. Okay, so we have browse wicker basket types. Now we have a list of all these different types. And then as people scroll down, they can find even more. We're gonna start with the 30 favorite wicker baskets. And the way that I do it is I use short codes. You're gonna see products here. So you can either manually add products by adding images and linking out to wherever those products go to. There's also short codes. So with WooCommerce, there's a bunch of different short codes. So what I like to do is come in here to products, go to categories, and the short code that I'm gonna use, so I like to do a space, and then I like to do a line break, okay? So we have our HR here and products. So for me, it's products category equals quotes, columns equals three. You can set different columns and then limit, the total limit I'm gonna have is 30. And then I'm gonna do order by equals popularity, and then order equals descending, okay? So that will list our 30 most popular products in the product category. So now what we need to do is come over to our products category. So here's my wicker baskets product category. If I scroll over the edit portion here, at the very bottom of the page, you're gonna see it shows the ID. It's gonna be right around here. So for this one, it's 640. So that shows up here at the bottom, 640. So we're gonna come over for our products category and we're gonna do 640. 
Okay, so now that's gonna list our 30 most popular wicker baskets based on people looking at them on our website. So now we have wicker storage baskets, wicker laundry baskets, and all of these are gonna get an H2 heading. So our H1 heading is gonna be best wicker baskets. And then for H2, what we're gonna be doing is all of these different categories of different types of wicker baskets. So we'll come here, we'll make these all header two. Okay, and if you look at the outlines we gave you, you can see here that for the Ahrefs list posts, you can see for list items, very small here, but it says use H2 subheadings. So it's an option to use H2, H3. You just wanna make sure you're breaking things down in the right way. So for this example here, blog post title would be your H1, that's your header one. Your main point one would be your header two. And any main points that you wanna section off under this, your main point one, main point two, you wanna use H3. So the further you go down the line, you wanna use H1, H2, H3, H4. I never really use H5, but if you do get there, then keep going on to H5. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over to our blog post and we're gonna make sure all of these have header two. Okay, so we have header two here. So I'm gonna do that now, we'll fast forward a bit. Okay, so these are all header two. So now I think what we're ready to do is look at a preview of what our blog post is gonna look like. So this is just a preview, we haven't published anything yet. And you can see here, best wicker baskets, we'll create our featured image. We have a couple introduction sentences here and then browse wicker basket types. We have all these different types here. And then as we get down 30 favorite wicker baskets, I'm gonna make sure these are all centered, but we have 30 different baskets for sale ranked by popularity. Basically what people, how many people have looked at each of these products. So that's 30 here. Now we have wicker storage baskets. We're going to do products. Wicker laundry baskets. We're going to do products. So hopefully seeing the blog post makes it look a little bit better. And we're going to have products for each of these subcategories. Now I haven't added them, these products to my website for every subcategory just yet. But I do have a lot of them. So that's what I'm going to start with. And then as we come down how to choose the right wicker basket, we're going to write a lot more content here for all of these categories as well. So you're gonna see it takes a lot of written word to actually rank high in Google and other search engines. So if we just look at this specific blog post, we come down to the bottom. My word count right now is 933. And that one that we looked at earlier was almost 4,000 words. So I'm only about a quarter of the way there in terms of word count. Now again, that's not the only ranking factor with Google. You don't just wanna focus on word count. But if I'm a brand new website and I'm trying to rank above this page that has 4,000 words, a ton of great images and words for each individual wicker storage basket they recommended, it's going to be hard to outrank them with only 1,000 words. I'm going to have to be really impactful. So that's not something I try to do. I usually try to match or exceed. So that's kind of what we're looking to do. Now with all these products here. All I have to do is keep using this short code. So we're gonna copy this here, come over to, we'll do wicker laundry baskets for right now. I know I have that product category and I'll do a non-blank space and then I'll do a line underneath it because I think it breaks up the article well. If we come up to the top here, you're gonna see here's the line and then we get into the next portion. So I think it looks a little better doing it that way. Now the other thing I'm gonna do, and we'll focus on wicker laundry baskets for right now, but this is what we're gonna do with all these categories. We're gonna add these products. So we'll come over to our product categories and we have wicker laundry baskets, 41 products on our website. So we'll come over here, it's 641. You can see at the bottom of the page right here. So if we look, it's gonna say product or tag ID is 641. I've looked at different ways to find this tag ID. That's the only way I know how to find it. They don't have a column for it here for some reason. So. Come back over to our post and wicker laundry baskets will be 641. We'll do three columns. We'll do limit 30 for this as well. Could do a little bit less, but 30 should be fine. And we're not even gonna order this at all. We're just gonna do a random order. So 641, three, limit 30. And now what I like to do is instead of this, we're gonna do another, and we're gonna say shop our complete collection of wicker laundry baskets here. And what I'm gonna do is come over to my blog posts. So here's my preview, come over to our blog, just publish wicker benches, keep coming down. We have large wicker baskets, black wicker baskets, picnic. And here we go, best wicker laundry baskets. So we'll click on this here and we're gonna to link to this page. So this is considered a topic cluster. Gone over this in previous videos, but this would be considered a pillar page. This would be considered a cluster page. So your pillar page is the short tail keyword, so wicker baskets, 
And then all of my cluster pages are all the different subcategories. So laundry baskets, large baskets, black baskets, picnic baskets, baskets with handles. Those are all my pillar pages. So it's a great concept and it's gonna help you rank because you're targeting all of your different keywords. So we came over here, we're creating pages for all of these different subcategories and all of these short tail keywords, especially as we keep coming down here. And it's gonna help us rank for all this search volume. Then we're gonna help drive those people to our website. That's our goal here. So we're gonna take this page, we're gonna copy it, come over, and we're gonna paste it here. Best Wicker Laundry Baskets here. So we're gonna link that, open a new tab, URL, add link. Okay, so we're gonna do that for every single one of these subcategories, and I do have pages for all these subcategories on my blog. You saw a lot of them already. So we're just gonna keep linking out to all of them within this blog post. Now I'm gonna start fast forwarding a little bit through this process, because at this point, you should have some idea of what we're trying to accomplish. So we pulled out all of these long tail keywords. We're creating additional written content for all of them, not a ton. And then we send them to a page like Best Wicker Laundry Baskets has all of our products for sale. And if we come to the bottom, gives people some tips on how to choose them, some different variations as well. So again, this is a long tail variation of wicker laundry baskets, small wicker laundry baskets, large wicker laundry baskets. If we keep coming down with wheels, with lids and liners and why people need it, keep your space tidy. And then in summary, so I could even keep expanding on this, but it's the best way to create comprehensive content is to say, okay, I'm going to take this keyword. I'm going to write 500 to a thousand words about it. And then what we're going to do is create a pillar page. So a large overview page, and we're going to write thousands of words on this page and link off to all these other pages. So when a search engine is looking at what pages to rank, they're going to say, okay, this page wickerguide.com has 100 pages on their website dedicated to different types of baskets, different colors of baskets people can choose, different sizes, different styles. So when someone's looking for wicker baskets, they're going to be the most likely to find it on this website. Whereas if I just put together this large post of wick, best wicker baskets, I wrote 10,000 words, but didn't link out to any other page on my website, it's probably gonna be less likely to rank because it's just not a user-friendly page. So with these links that we're gonna set up here, it's gonna be very user-friendly. So we'll set it up for wicker laundry baskets. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you, so we're gonna preview this again. Okay, now what we wanna do is we're gonna take this wicker laundry baskets right here and we're gonna come over and we're gonna link this. So what we do is we do an ahref and you're gonna have this hashtag here, pound sign, and I'm gonna do wicker laundry baskets. We wanna close this over on this side and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna copy it, come down to wicker laundry baskets, paste it here, and we're gonna do a name and we're gonna get rid of our hashtag, our pound sign. And what we're gonna do is close this again. So now we have our header two, a name wicker laundry baskets. So we're gonna save this and we're gonna preview it again. Okay, so you can see we have a link set up here. So now when I click on this link, you can see it brings me right down to my section with wicker laundry baskets. So it's really that simple to set it up. And this is how you set up a table of contents. You see these in all of the Wikipedia articles, go to any, any Wikipedia page and they're gonna have the history and basically everything you need to know linked out so that people can easily find it. Now we also have this arrow over to the right so people can easily go back up to the top of the page. So trying to make things user friendly, that's really the goal with my website. So when people do come in here, they say, I'm looking for a new wicker basket and specifically I want a wicker picnic basket. They can click here and go directly down there. So now what we need to do is we need to scroll down and we need to finish writing our content. We need to keep adding our products. So I need to make sure I have all my products here. We're going to keep coming down, enter our meta description. So that's what I'll do now. Okay, so we have our category set here, wicker baskets. I might end up adding it to other categories, but for right now, that's it. That's it. Discover the top rated wicker baskets for sale. We, and then we have just some different variations. And I usually use the most popular ones. So laundry, storage, large, small. Those are the top four keywords. So those are the ones we'll mention here. You don't just want to stuff keywords in here. So I tried to use something like wicker laundry baskets, storage baskets, large wicker, wicker baskets. So try to mix up your wording the way you're using them just so it's not like you're stuffing keywords into whatever you're doing. I try not to stuff keywords when I'm writing. I really just use the keywords as a guideline to make sure I can expand on that keyword a little bit, especially as I'm targeting more long tail keywords within a blog post. 
Now the next thing I want to do is set my featured image. You can also set tags with your blog posts. So you might have different types of blog posts. It could be product reviews. It could be maybe large guides or long form content. You can use tags to separate those all out. Now with the featured image, I usually just use canva.com. So I've already come in here. I created my wicker baskets design. I just created a, if we look, it's 1000 by 500. I used, if we come into elements here, I use the grid. So just click on the grid, upload a couple images, place them in there and we have our design. So I download this, come back over to my blog post and we're going to set our featured image. So we're going to upload that file and I name my file wicker baskets here. So you can see it's a JPEG 1000 by 500 and we're going to copy this. We'll paste it into the alt text, make sure it stays there, set our featured image. So now we have a featured image here as well. So next steps. So I'm going to stop the video here, but I hope hopefully you have an idea of how to write blog posts that rank. It's going to take a lot of content. And what you need to do is make sure you keep your page up to date over time. So once I publish this, so let's just click on publish and I'll keep going back and improving this blog post. But once I publish this, so it's published November 24th, 2020. Once it's published, it's not done. You need to keep this updated over time. So I'm going to keep updating this page because it's a huge page for me. It's one of my most popular keywords. If we come up to the top here, wicker baskets is my third most popular keyword. And since wicker isn't really something that I'm probably going to ever rank for, even if I do the best possible page on what wicker is, I can rank for wicker baskets, wicker chairs, wicker furniture. So it's really one of my most popular your keywords, one of my most important keywords in terms of driving traffic and driving revenue. Now, since we publish our blog post, we can come over and we'll view our post. Again, I know I need to do a lot more work on this, but what we're gonna do is paste this here in the URL portion. So we have wicker baskets. Well, we've already published a lot of these other types of blog posts that we're gonna end up linking to it. So I'm gonna make sure I link all those. I'm gonna make sure I add all of my products. So if you go to this page and look, it should be more updated than it is right this second. But and then the last thing I need to do is come to the bottom, fill out all of this content as well, how to choose the right wicker basket, what is a wicker basket, types, what to do with them, sizes, colors, and then I'll do an in summary. Usually I'll just wrap up the article with in summary and I'll do one or two sentences here. So that's how I kind of wrap up my blog post, make sure I have my featured image set. If you're using WordPress and you're using Yoast SEO, you can set your focus key phrase here so I could do wicker baskets, see what they think about uh, my efforts, not happy, not anything to be too worried about, but this is really what I try to do is understand with the keyword that I'm targeting with my blog post, ways to expand on it and be more comprehensive by looking at what's currently ranking, by making sure I'm targeting all these long tail keyword variations, making sure I'm answering all the questions that people have, and then over time, so we have our Word document over here, over time, understanding that there's more keywords that I'm not targeting. For example, I don't have anything about Easter baskets. I don't know if I have anything about square baskets, baskets for shelves, extra large waste baskets, cube storage baskets, gray wicker baskets. So I need to eventually add all of that to this blog post. So again, just remember when you publish, it's not done. So if we come back over and you're trying to and really our goal here is how to write blog posts at rank high. The most important thing I can give to you is write a really great blog post to start with, publish it, and then go back to it and make sure you keep improving upon it. So if you're not ranking high for this keyword, go back into Google. Let's type in wicker baskets here, and then we can look just from the Google image options, storage, kitchen. So I have nothing about the kitchen, nothing about the bathroom. So I could do guides on how to use wicker baskets in your kitchen. How to use wicker baskets in your bathroom. Could probably do how to use wicker baskets in a home office. So all of those are going to be very useful for people. And not only can I write about it on my long form guide here, I can also add those keywords to my keyword list. So make sure I have something like wicker baskets kitchen, wicker baskets bathroom. Make sure I'm targeting these different keywords as well. Even if I have to look up the overall search volume and keep on writing for all these different keywords so that I can keep ranking and taking advantage of some of the search volume because ultimately that's how we're going to make money is by driving people to our website and getting people to purchase. Okay, so let's wrap this up and give you our main takeaways. So first, connect each keyword to user intent. So you want to appeal to the reason that people are searching particular keywords with your writing.
So the examples I used here, small business marketing ideas, people are looking for ideas they can implement quickly and effectively for their business. It could be something as simple as create a Google My Business page and make sure you have all of your information updated for your business on that Google My Business page. Create better resources than your competitors. So you wanna make sure you're creating comprehensive, helpful, user-friendly pages for your targeted keywords. And I can't stress this enough to keep your content up to date because over time, Google is gonna lower the rankings for content that's not updated and relevant and increase ranking for content that continues to stay up to date. The other thing is if you keep this page up to date, I don't need to keep creating pages about you know, wicker baskets. I don't need to keep creating different blog posts like 50 best wicker baskets you could buy, 100 wicker baskets for your kitchen. I don't need to keep doing that. I can just keep adding it to this page. And if I have backlinks for this page, it's only gonna help my rankings as I continue to create more content and as time passes and I keep gathering those backlinks. Last but not least, use outlines. Outlines will help you create that comprehensive content, help you target long tail keywords, answer questions that people have, and understand what types of problems you're trying to solve and exactly what people are looking for. So hopefully this all makes sense. You can write however you feel comfortable. You can write directly in Microsoft Word. You can write directly in WordPress. You can use something like anotepad.com where you have your note title, note content. You can share this to different places. So there's different ways to write blog posts, but ultimately what you want to do is create outlines, write a couple different sentences for those outlines that you're following, and follow some of these templates and look for other templates as well. There's a ton of different blog post templates and just look at what is currently ranking for your keywords and you need to create better content. You need to target all the different keywords for your business and as you do that, you will increase your rankings. I promise you will increase your rankings. So. Again, if you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments section. Write, write, write every single day, even if you're improving old content, if you're creating new content, that is what's gonna help you drive that organic search traffic. Thanks for watching my video today, and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.